receive a call from an Insteon user who's having problems with their Insteon network. Users often think they have a defective unit when the problem is actually a previously undiscovered Insteon signal interference issue. In this video, I'm going to talk a little about how Insteon works, what causes signal problems, and what to do to resolve the issues. The manufacturer claims Insteon is the best-selling, most reliable home control and automation technology. From our experience, we believe their claim is absolutely justified, but that doesn't mean problems can't occur. Insteon communication is surprisingly complex. Every Insteon device is assigned a hard-coded, six-digit, alphanumeric, hexadecimal code during manufacturing that cannot be altered. This coding method produces nearly 17 million unique Insteon addresses to distinguish every Insteon device from any other. Think of each address as a unique name assigned at birth to every device. This eliminates any possibility that your neighbor could inadvertently control your home because an Insteon device will only control another if their addresses have been exchanged through the linking process. Insteon devices are thought of in two categories, controllers and responders. A controller is a device that originates a command, like turning on a light that is acted upon by the responder. The responder is a device that responds to the command by actually controlling the load. All Insteon devices are either controllers or responders, and in some cases they can be both. When one Insteon device communicates with another, the message sent includes the Insteon address of the controller, the Insteon address of the responder, and the action to be taken. The message is either sent out over your home's power line, as seen in this slide, or over the air via a radio or RF signal, as indicated in this slide, or in some cases both. Whenever another Insteon device hears a message that is not intended for it, it retransmits or repeats the message. If multiple devices hear the message, they all repeat the message in unison, effectively making the transmission even stronger. Because of this phenomenon, the more Insteon devices in use in your home, the better the entire network works. When the message gets to the intended responder, the responder acknowledges the message by sending an acknowledgement back to the controller. If the controller fails to receive the acknowledgement for any reason, it automatically retransmits the original command and waits for a response. This protocol makes Insteon very reliable, but there still can be problems. Occasionally, conditions can exist that can prevent even the most robust communications method from working properly. Think of trying to carry on a conversation with a friend next to a jet aircraft takeoff. The noise level is simply too great to be heard under any circumstances. Another example might be trying to talk with someone in a soundproof room. The walls effectively isolate your friend by attenuating the sound until it becomes inaudible. But you may still be able to communicate with your friend if you both have a cell phone and you're in range of a signal. Similar situations can occur with Insteon messages in your home. The Insteon folks use a similar solution with dual band technology. Many Insteon devices use both power line and radio communications simultaneously. If the communications is not successful using one method, the message will usually get through using the other. Additionally, dual band devices repeat all Insteon messages on both power line and radio paths, so the signal can be handed off from power line to radio and back again, making it almost 100% reliable. Not all devices are dual band, however. Battery operated devices like the water leak sensors, door and window sensors, motion sensors, 
and many remote switches are radio only and do not repeat Insteon signals. Other devices like the I.O. link repeat Insteon signals but only on the power line and do not use any radio communications. These variations in Insteon modules can create some interesting conditions. For example, when using wireless sensors in your network, you must include at least one dual band device to enable communications with any power line only devices. More on this later. Another way to look at Insteon's dual mesh network topology is this. The red boxes represent power line only devices and connectivity. The blue represent RF devices and their connectivity. Dual band devices are both red and blue. As you can see, even this simple example with only a few Insteon devices, communications between any two points is extremely robust, and more devices you add, the better. For those who really want detailed information on how Insteon works, a good resource can be found at www.insteon.com slash pdf slash insteon details dot pdf. I've just touched on the basics, but it is helpful to know when you troubleshoot your network. Troubleshooting Insteon problems some, can sometimes be a little frustrating, but always resolvable if you take a logical and analytic approach and remember the Insteon basics we just learned. For example, we recently received a call from a customer who was trying to install one of our Insteon water shutoff valve packages to work with his existing Insteon hub automation controller and wireless water leak sensors. The hub and leak sensors had been working flawlessly. The customer was unable to successfully link the I.O. link to the hub, so a defective I.O. link was suspected. The customer had purchased a different I.O. link from another source, only to find out that it had the same problem. It wouldn't link to the hub. Here's where the basic Insteon knowledge and analytic approach come in. The Insteon hub is a dual band device, power line, and radio. The water leak sensors, which had been working, are radio or RF only. So far, so good. The I.O. link is a power line only device, but since the hub is dual band, it should work too, but it didn't. It turns out that the I.O. link was his only power line only device, and the rest of his Insteon network had been working on RF only, and he'd never been the wiser. The problem was undetected power line interference, which brings us to our next topic, how to troubleshoot Insteon power line interference. As I mentioned earlier, Insteon power line interference is caused by two things, excess noise and or attenuation. Unfortunately, this kind of noise or attenuation can't be heard and tools for identifying its presence are expensive and not readily available. The best way to find it is through the process of elimination. The commercial power standard commonly used in North American residences and light commercial applications can be thought of as two separate 120 volt power sources that when added together produce the 240 volts used for heavy duty applications like electric heating, air conditioning, electric ranges, and clothes dryers. The key words here are two separate sources. While in reality they are connected in the power company transformer on your block, the two sources effectively isolate the Insteon signals from one source or leg to the other. In other words, an outlet connected to leg A entering your home may not provide a suitable path for Insteon signals to travel to an outlet wired to leg B. The result is an Insteon device that works when plugged into some outlets, 
but not in others. To test for this condition, simply turn on your electric oven temporarily to see if the Insteon device starts working normally. If it does, then you have an attenuation problem caused by a lack of coupling between 120 volt legs. Insteon recommends using at least two dual band devices, one on each of the two 120 volt legs in every Insteon installation. Contact us if you need assistance in determining which devices can be used to meet this requirement. If you're still having communications problems with the oven on, you may still have other attenuation or noise problems. Some common electrical devices have been known to cause power line noise and attenuation. Check to see that none of your Insteon devices are plugged into power strips. Some power strips include surge protection, which can create attenuation problems. Other common sources of problems are the little wall transformers used as battery chargers for smartphones and other mobile computing devices, or as power supplies for cable modems or other audio video hardware. Unplug every one of them and retest Insteon communications. If it starts working, plug the transformers in one at a time, testing before plugging in the next until the defective transformer is found. Once found, replace it or use an Insteon filter link to isolate it from the power line. Certain brands of televisions, computer printers, uninterruptible power systems, and even refrigerators have been known to cause power line noise. Merely turning the appliance off will not isolate it. Temporarily unplug any suspected appliance while testing to find the culprit. Again, it can be permanently isolated with a filter link later. Be sure to use the filtered outlet on the bottom. The pass-through outlet on the front does not provide filtering. Another tip to help narrow the search is to turn off all circuit breakers one at a time until the problem is resolved. This will at least tell you which circuit the defective device is connected to. You can then look for the problem associated with only one circuit. Yes, finding the source of an Insteon communications problem can sometimes be time consuming and a little tedious, but a clean network will allow it to perform as it should. One last Insteon tip. Always perform a factory reset on any module before adding it to your network. Also, unlink any module before physically removing it from your network. Taking these steps will prevent partial links. Partial links are created when a device is physically removed, but its address still remains in the databases of the remaining devices. When the remaining devices try to communicate with a device that is no longer present, they will not receive an acknowledgement, so they will attempt numerous retransmissions, which will degrade the performance of the entire network. As always, please visit our website for all your Insteon needs, and if you have any questions concerning anything covered in this video or any other Insteon questions, please contact us at the number on your screen or email us at support at innovativehomesys.com. Thanks for watching.